Welcome home, neighbors. Welcome home, neighbors. Hello, neighbors. We're listening from Arizona, Florida, Maryland, New York, New Jersey, Indianapolis, California, California, Utah, Michigan, Iowa, Massachusetts, Georgia, Canada. Our home resort is Animal Kingdom, Polynesian, Bay Lake Town, Old Key West, Lavia, Boardwalk, Kalani Resort, Hilton Head, Boulder Ridge, Copper Creek, Grand Floridian, Saratoga Springs, Beach Club, and Wilderness Lodge. And you're listening to. And you're listening. You're listening, you're listening to, to, my, to my 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 to my. my, 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 my Hello and welcome to DVC Newscast. This is episode 138. I am Shannon and joining me today we got Pete. Hey Shannon. Now we're recording this the day of the eclipse and you were in the... I I am in the path of totality. Yeah, how was it? Was it pretty cool? It was pretty cool. I mean, it was pretty overcast and we didn't know what we would see, but it just started kind of, the clouds started breaking up right around the time of the eclipse So we were able to see kind of just as the totality started. It was funny because it got like super dark really suddenly. And then it was dark for like four minutes. And then suddenly it's light again. And it's like, I thought it would be more gradual, but it was like, yeah, from like normal light to complete darkness was like two minutes. It was kind of freaky. So it was very cool. I I, I wish it had not been cloudy and we could have seen like more of it, but it, it was definitely cool to be able to just, be at home and see it i know people traveled from all over to see it a lot of people did yeah there was i saw somebody over the news on the weekend who like she travels to every single one i was like wow that's 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 a yeah i don't don't think i would go that far yeah (laughs) but it was cool for sure well that's cool i just i think about when i see that I, i think about 300 years ago 400 years ago when they didn't know that they were coming. Right. What would you think if you're just, you know, out working yeah. in the fields and just and everything was, just went dark? And all of a sudden the sun gets blocked out. And yeah. You're like, what the heck? I mean, yeah. I would, you think you would probably think like the world is ending, but you know, For it's sure. still, yeah, that's pretty cool. Ryder was asking me about it this week and we were all, all we were like, just don't look at the sun. Don't look at the sun, but we're not here to about talk about the eclipse. We're no. here to talk about Disney and It's been a little time since we've had the last newscast, but there is a little bit of news. But before we get into it, let's just give a shout out to our sponsor for today's episode. That is DVC Resale Market. So if you are looking to purchase a resale contract, or maybe you want to sell your current contract, definitely hit up our friends at DVC Resale Market. They can help you out with everything. And if you just want to learn about DVC Resale, They have a great resource. I think it's like DVC 101, where you can learn all about DVC, the point structure, what is a use here, and it teaches you about DVC, and then where you can be a little bit more educated if you are looking to purchase. And if you're like me, you can window shop sometimes as well. So definitely hit up our friends at DVC Resale Market. And I will go ahead and take this first news story, and that is that Test Track is set to close on June 17th for an extended refurbishment. On April 5th, Disney announced that Test Track will be closing with the last day of operation being June 16th. After that, the ride will be changed up with a World of Motion-inspired makeover. There is no word on how long the closure will be, but it is expected to be at least a year. So we knew this was coming, and I was hoping that it would happen after our trip which is in july and it is not for those of you who don't know my sons this is one of my son's favorite ride is test track i think it's guardians is a close is close and maybe tweaks it out a little bit but test track has been his longtime favorite so there were some tears on on april 5th when he saw this on youtube and we're trying to figure out we could get a day trip in to to go ride it one one last time in its current stage now, what do you think about this? Disney has said this is it's going to be kind of redesigned to follow along with the old World of Motion ride, which is what it replaced back in the late 90s. And I don't even remember that. I don't remember it either. I mean, I think I wrote it once, but I can't tell you I remember the ride. It was not fast moving. I know that it was more like an omni mover type slow moving ride. My biggest thing on this is they probably got the money from or a part of the money from Chevy because Chevrolet is going to continue to sponsor them. But it's like, you know, you got rides like imagination or spaceship earth, even which, you know, they were supposed to do a, a refurb on and they, it got canceled and everything. like that. And I'm thinking like, this is a ride that like, if it's under an hour wait, it's, 
that's like, oh, let's get in line, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and, and when we're there anyways, it's always 90 minutes, 120 minutes. I mean, we, we tend to do a single rider because of that. We're not waiting that long, but a lot of people obviously are waiting that long. So I don't really get why it's necessary to close a very popular ride for a year. But on the other hand, you know, hey, having a refreshed ride, there's nothing wrong with that either, I suppose. If they manage to make it so it breaks down less, that would be good. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I mean, I heard rumors that they're changing the even the vehicles. There's a lot of rumors about, I heard one rumor that they were going to like cover the outside part. So it was not build a huge building or anything, but just cover it so they can keep it running in the rain. We don't know what's true. Disney is seeming to indicate it's about it going to be about a year. So I wouldn't expect it to be like a complete tear down. It's going to be the same track would be my bet or maybe minor changes, but I think it'll be the same track. It'll just be a, a different overlay. Could they cover the outside section? I suppose so. New vehicles, I suppose. Why not? I mean, they could have been building those for the last year. Obviously, anyone going in the next year would be be disappointed. And it's certainly going to push a lot more people to Soren and, you know, Remy and Guardians, I guess, with the, with the lightning. Yeah, with, and this is the, the thing. The thing that, that I thought about is how is this going to impact Genie Plus? Because Epcot... Right. That, you know, Genie Plus, you know, we have gotten it the last, ever since they changed it where you can get it for one park and it's cheaper, right. we have gotten it for Epcot because it has made it worth it. But, you know, after the first one or two, you really can't get much. No, so no. So now. You, yeah, same thing. We've done it and you get like, if you're lucky, you get two of the major rides before they right. sell out. Yeah. Right. And you, and you really have to be on top of it. So now you're removing one ride. I mean. I would yeah. think that they'll just have to go limit the amount of Genie Plus that can be sold at Epcot, but still it's it's just going to make it even harder. You know, yeah. and and probably not even harder, but just not as worth it because Test Track was one of the ones that we got it for because we weren't going to stand in the regular line for that. I think that's going to be interesting because it's just going to be a lot less to choose from for for the Genie Plus. Even if they stop with the virtual queue for for Guardians, I think they would still continue to have the individual Lightning Lane for oh, Guardians. Totally, totally. So it's not like they're going to put Guardians in there to replace Test Track. So Absolutely. as you say, yeah. all so now all you have really for for big rides is Remy, Frozen, and Soren. And Soren isn't that hard to to find times where the line isn't too long. It's I mean, not. If, you, if you wait till after seven o'clock, you can usually get on there. You know, 30, 40 minutes. I don't know. Hey, I said, anytime they do something like this, it's a, it's generally a good thing. I just think there's other rides in Epcot that should have come first or, or how about finishing whatever they were doing in wonders of life? Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, they, they started doing stuff in there. We, you know, they had announced the play pavilion and yeah. they were working on it for a few years. They redid the out exterior and, you know, why not finish that? I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I well, all I know is we are trying to figure out a day trip to to get there and do go to Epcot before June sixteenth, and we are and the harder thing is we're blacked out on weekends because we only have the yeah. Pixie Dust Pass, so we have to find a weekday and yeah. Well, but uh, to a seven year old, a year is forever, right? <laughs> well, and I think it's just also, I mean, it, this is my little Disney nerd kid. Is that he asked, yeah. are they going to ruin it like they ruined Im imagination? <laughs> now he's never ridden it in. The, its original form but he right. he's watched enough videos yeah. of how they ruined that ride so he is he thinks they're gonna ruin it so he, <laughs> he doesn't really have much faith in the current walt disney and imagineering that's which, too um, cynical for a seven-year-old come on yeah, well, he's, eight. he's eight, eight you know okay but, <laughs> sorry well eight then yeah then it's pretty cynical. yeah he's starting to get cynical hopefully we'll get up there to get it to let him ride it one more time but yeah we'll see and i it, that's also going to change our day for our July trip, because that's test track. We usually ride two times, even even if even with a lightning lane, you can wait 45 minutes sometimes with a lightning lane yeah, at test track. Well, yeah. That's really going to change our day in, in July. I think hopefully it'll, it won't be down that long and hopefully what comes of it will be better. So time will tell, time will tell. 
Now we'll move on to our next story, and that is that Woody's Backyard Barbecue has been added to the DVC discount dining list with a 10% discount. Many restaurants on property provide a 10% discount for DVC and AP members. Now Woody's Backyard Barbecue has been added to that list. First opening in 2022, this is the first time a disca- discount for DVC members has been available at this restaurant. I have eaten there. Now, have you eaten there? Yes, we tried you it. Have. We tried it once. Yeah. Yeah. So did we. Very good. Really. Mm-hmm. Actually, it was really, really good. Really expensive. 10% is not going to get you very far. When we went anyways, it was 50 bucks. I don't know if they've gone up since then. Yeah. I just remember it being very expensive. Yeah. It was It was yeah. $50. And I don't know what it was for kids. But I agree. It was, it was surprisingly good barbecue. Surprisingly good sides. A kind of a fun environment though it was a little over packed, but I, I did kind of like the environment and everything like that. So I, I didn't mind paying the money for it, but I don't go to the all you can eat places that often. Cause we, we just, we've reached an age where we can't eat that much. So, you know, I, I'm not sure I would rush back there and certainly a 10% discount is not going to, as you say, right. maybe 20%, I would do it. You know, if they still had tables in wonderland, I wonder if that'll ever come back, but I doubt it. But a lot of people really like it. So, I mean, if you have a large party, 10% still, you know, it's, still I, you know, I, I, we like, just like us, we, it was one of those things that, that we wanted to do. We wanted to do once we we had no regrets doing it, but it was a one and done for us. So would we have gladly taken 10% off? Absolutely. So right. I think it's great. And it's especially that it's been around for a little bit. So I think it's good. But is it like you just said, is it enough to entice me to go back? No, it's too expensive for what it is. I mean, if there were some characters, I think it would be worth it. But, you know, there aren't. But it's it is a great experience. And again, if you're going now, now you get 10 percent. Yeah, that's true. For that price, you should at least have like a a character meet when you come into the restaurant or something like that. Yeah, I think even if they had like one like they do with the beast at the castle. Exactly. Right. Yeah. If you you just had like Woody at the entrance to to greet you or something, Mm -hmm. take a photo. That yep. would like that, that would almost make the $50 yep. make more sense. We did get one question from a listener who's watching live. So does Imagination Pavilion ever get any love? Maybe after Test Track is completed? Long overdue. I There's so much. I like, I like want to go back to school, get a job with Disney, <laughs> yeah. move up through the ranks just to fix that ride. <laughs> like I, That's the way I feel about it. But not uh, even the ride, but the pavilion, the after, you know, well, yeah, like, the whole thing, the whole right. thing in the back, like that. We like playing that game. My son likes playing the game, like the memory yeah. game. And some of them you have to like literally bang and hit really hard because they it doesn't register. My son still loves going back there. And it's, you know, you do have a couple of the character meets now and, and it still entertains him. But yeah, I, I agree with that too. But there's so much you could do with imagination. That should be the best ride at Epcot, not the worst. I'm, I'm with <laughs> you, Jim, is what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> so our next story is more DVC related and it's talking about direct in- incentives. So when the cabins were announced a few months ago and released the incentives, just, the incentives really weren't all that great. And actually they came out with some incentives that are actually better than those initial in- incentives. These are the same for all of the currently selling resorts. So we're talking about Riviera, Fort Wilderness Cabins, Olani, and also the villas at the Disneyland Hotel. So this is this applies to all of those. But new members can receive a $13 per point discount on any purchase of 150 points or more. In addition, a welcome home credit is also added for buyers buying more than 150 points. And that number starts at $2,000. So in addition to the 150 points, you would also get $2,000 off. And that actually scales up the larger the contract you buy. So if you bought a 300 point contract, you'd get like 3,500 off instead of 2,000. That usually, when they call it a welcome home credit, that usually only applies to buying the points on property when you're there. I don't know if that's true or not. We got this off of DVC News. They always post all these new incentives, and they did not specify that, so we weren't we aren't sure about that. The other thing, though, is if you're an existing member and you're looking to get more points, they are giving $17 per point discount starting at 100 points. 
with the, that additional welcome home credit starting adding on at 150 points. $17 per point discount at 100 points is actually a pretty good price, even for Riviera or any of these other ones. That's that's higher than most. Now, a lot of times it usually goes up as you get more points. And again, they, they do add the welcome home discount. And then the final thing, and I had to share this because, you know, you and I and and my DVC points community as a whole, we're very big on purchasing your points resale. There's good reasons to maybe get that 150 points to get the, the membership. But then after that, look at buying another way. But DVC is also offering a deep discount on Old Key West points. Base price on that is $205 per point. But direct pricing is giving existing members $40 per point discount for 150 points. And so existing members mean any means anybody that's bought Disney at all. If you don't have that direct membership benefit, you could get a point at Old Key West for $165 a point right now. And then it goes even more as you go up. And a 500 point contract right now is $80 per point discount, which is down to $125 per point. And that is that's the 2057 end date. Right. Wow. So, yeah, $125 a point. Not that I want to buy 500 points, but that's a really good price if you want a larger contract. So, this is really the lowest entry point to direct purchase that we've seen in quite a while. So, if you have resale points and you're thinking of maybe buying 150 points, but you don't want to spend $200 or $230 to do so, that might be an option. Get 150 Old Key West points. Again, they're going to be good at any resort because you're buying them directly from Disney. They would give you the discount. And then if you want more than 150 points, maybe you look at resale for that. What do you think? Is that something you would ever consider? For I mean, you live in Florida, so you don't have to worry so much about having access to the to the passes because you have them because you're a Florida resident. But yeah, you know, yeah, that, um, that to me is a big, a big selling point to direct is the passes. Yeah, I and I think, but I think that the old pass discount was much more lucrative, I guess you could say, it, or enticing. Yeah, because I, I think the discount isn't as good as it once was since the since the annual passes came back, since they've been re you know revamped. Because I remember the gold pass was really where it was at, and DVC had access to that, and you don't yeah, have the, access to that. Well, you equivalent. still. You still have access to the Sorcerer Pass, but it is $1,000 now. Yeah. But so. like the pass, the one that was the gold, I, I just remember the one that I had, which was the gold that was Florida resident. Because now we just have the weekday one, which DVC never right. had access to. But it was like the gold equivalent, which was had a lot of blackout dates for holidays. But that was really, uh, now we always had access to it because we're Florida residents. It's just not as good as it once was. But Again, it's still something. And if you have a family of four or five, then it really makes a difference. I'm just looking at this like 100. It's so funny that it's like, oh, it's it's $165 a point when I bought my resale for Saratoga at $72. And I'm just like, wow, right. it's just crazy. It's crazy. <laughs> I've bought, I think the most I spent for any, I have three three resale contracts and I think the highest one was 112. <laughs> yeah, it's still a lot of money for, you know, for Old Key West, but I, I, to the point, I think it was, if you're going to buy Old Key West resale, you're looking at the 2042 end date. There's not a lot of contracts out there that are 2057. Well, and this so. is the thing with the 500. So if you're buying, let's say you're buying a 500 point contract. Okay. Yeah. If you're buying a 500 point contract. You're probably not trying to get a studio. So at seven months, even if you're trying to like switch to a one bedroom or two bedroom, you're going to have a lot more options where yeah. it's not like, you know, we're thinking that the seven month mark, but those are for studios usually. And yet, and maybe some one bedrooms that's becoming a little bit harder. But again, if you're buying a 500 point contract, you're probably getting a two bedroom or something bigger. Let's yeah, be honest. I would think so. Right. Yeah. yeah. If you're do doing 500 points. So switching so. at seven months, isn't going to be as hard as it is for like you and me. <laughs> right. Right. So. Yeah. It's, I mean, I said, I don't know that I'd go with that, a 500 point contract, but if you're thinking about direct and you just want your foot in the door, as opposed to, I need to have, you know, Riviera or something like that, that's a pretty good price. Now, what do we think about these discounts? They're better than what first came out with the cabins. 
Mm -hmm. I wouldn't call them huge discounts. Certainly, if you include the welcome home, the prices at the at the lower end, the 150, 200 point, it, it's probably about as good as you're going to get. Because I mean, if you think about 150 points, if they're giving you $13 off, or yeah, if, if you're not an existing owner, they're giving you $13 off. Plus, they're giving you two thousand dollars, so that's what another roughly like seven dollars off. So, like twenty dollars a point off. What's direct price now? Two seventeen, something like that. I probably I should have this yeah, before I me. Don't. Brings you around two hundred dollars a point. Eh, I don't know. Is it an awesome incentive? No, it's a pretty good incentive though. At that at that price point, I mean, it's better than what they were given before. Do we see this as a sign that maybe the sales for the cabins aren't going as well as they thought, or just is, is this typical? I don't mm, follow it enough. No, I don't think I don't think this is necessarily a sign about the cabins, especially since it's not cabin specific, right? It's, okay. it's across the board. I don't think this is enough of a discount that it tells me Disney's too worried about sales. The, the Oki West thing is surprising. It, you know, because they haven't been buying back contracts, particularly the last mm -hmm. year or so. It's surprising that they must have a bunch of points sitting there for Oki West that they've decided to get rid of. It's the only yeah. thing I can think of. But it's a decent incentive, but not a great incentive, I would say. Um, okay. All right. And then our last story is on the edge of being a rumor, but it's not quite. A, it's more than a rumor now. We avoid rumors where we can. So Disney had some media in and was showing off some of the animatronics for Tiana's Bayou Adventure. And then at the same time, they also released a clip on Instagram showing some of the models for the Tropical Americas land that's replacing Dino Land in, in Animal Kingdom. The model that they were showing still indicated an Encanto and an Indiana Jones attraction. And there's also an image at that people that were there said showed a Coke, the movie Coco inspired merry-go-round. There's currently no timeline for in-park in construction, but Disney has filed a permit to set up large backstage area with trailers and storage for that construction. It does look like it's moving forward. They haven't officially announced a closing date for the area or anything like that. The fact that Disney is putting this out, I think, made it enough to be a story. Imagineering also provided info that the first permit for the Beyond Big Thunder expansion will be filed in the next few weeks. No information was given on what that's going to be or if they've they've even firmed that up or it, it's just for some like utilities and things like that. Disney is putting this out. So it's I think it's enough that we can say, well, they're slowly moving forward on these things. The expectations right now are that we'll see further details come out at D23, which is really only, what, four months away, I think. I think it's in, is it in August this year or July? I forget. It's not far away. I would expect at that they'll have a lot of details about the Tropical Americas and maybe even more on the Magic Kingdom expansion. But okay. we'll see. It's on August 8th, 2024. August so, 8th. Yeah. So yeah, about, so yeah, almost exactly four months. Yeah, what do you think? Is is Ryder going to be upset the dinosaur is gone? <laughs> he actually really likes dinosaur, but yeah. not that like it's not his favorite. But he he likes yeah. it. We actually all enjoy it. But um, yeah. he hasn't the dinosaur's ridden. Okay. But he knows he knows it's the same track as Indiana Jones. We right. he knows that he could ride dinosaur, but he couldn't ride Indiana Jones. Uh, when we went oh, to really? Disneyland, yeah, because it's actually Disney and Indiana Jones has a higher height requirement. Hmm. Um, I wonder why. When they when they redid it when it was the extinction ride before, mm -hmm. it actually had a higher height restriction or oh. requirement. And then when they redid it, they made it a little gentler to lower the height restriction. Gotcha. And it actually is not as I guess aggressive as the one in Indiana Jones. And I when I I knew that when we rode Indiana Jones, and I was like, oh yeah, this one is is more jerky for sure. Yeah, so he's never ridden Indiana Jones. I've only ridden it once, just the one time when we were there. And he won't be upset about this one. And he's not a big fan. Not that he's not a big fan of Animal Kingdom, but that's probably his least favorite park. He's not really attached to anything there. Yeah, we're not we're not too attached to Dino Land for sure. If they ever said we're gonna close the safari or something like that, 
that would be disappointing, but I don't think there's any threat of that happening. I personally think Dino Land's something that never really worked all that well. And I feel the same thing with the dinosaur ride that it's a lot of it's too dark. And now it seems like when you ride it, that some of the dinosaurs aren't even working and things like that. <laughs> I think the Indiana Jones ride is is better. I won't I won't call it way better because they're similar enough. But I feel like the Indiana Jones ride, you can see more of what's going on. <laughs> yeah. So. And I think it just. I honestly, I think Indiana Jones kind of fits better in Animal Kingdom too. I don't know. I never really understood the dinosaurs. I kind I I understand where how they made it fit in, but still. Yeah, and it's well. I think it's one of those things that they felt like they couldn't do something like Jurassic World be, or Jurassic Park for right. obvious reasons. And so they tried to do something with dinosaurs, but keep it different enough. Well, it was also the time that that movie Dinosaur came out or the good right. dinosaur, right? It was the good right. dinosaur. Yeah, for sure. The I forget the, my daughter would know. She knows every kind of dinosaur. It's crazy. I think that that land, as said, if you know the details of the theming of it, if you like look into the history of it, it's kind of cool how they themed it and how they designed it and everything like that. But the actual, when you just go there and the execution of it, it's not all that interesting because, you know, the idea was, oh, there were bones found here. There's a bunch of grad students. They built the restaurant. Asaurus is all based on grad students living there and everything like that. And then this roadside attraction sprang up and it's like traditional roadside attraction cheesy. But the problem is by making your theming roadside attraction cheesy, it's just cheesy. You can't overcome that. Then they took out Primeval Whirl, which was really the main second attraction in that area, right? Yeah. And losing that, means now your Chester and Hester's area just has a spinner. I don't think a lot of people are going to be devastated by the change other than, you know, maybe losing dinosaur stuff, but Jurassic Park does it so much better anyways. I think that it's not that big a deal. Yeah. Yeah. I'm very excited about Encanto. You know, yeah. we actually went to Disney on Ice last night and it was the Frozen Encanto show, which was great. And we did the meet and greet and got to meet Elsa and, and Mirabel before. And you, when you see that, you realize just that music is so great. The whole sh the whole movie. And oh, yeah. you know, we don't really sit and watch the movies very often, but the music is just so good. Mm -hmm. I would be very excited for a land. Um, and then it looks like Coco would be part of it as well, which obviously yep. I love as well. I'm excited about that. Yeah, we wouldn't make a day trip for this. We don't, we're, not gonna, we're not making a day trip for no, Dinosaur. For dinosaur. Well, yeah. they haven't announced any closure or anything, so I think it's still a while off. By a while, it could still be this year, but I, I don't think it's going to close this summer or anything. Okay. Um, test, test track, we were hearing rumors about, I think even on the last show we mentioned some rumors about it closing in July, but now, now it's a real date. And I just, I think if they're closing test track, now that we're going back to test track, um, if they're closing test track, that I think that moves up the date for Tiana's. We don't have a date yet for Tiana's, right. but I don't think they would have had a date put out for Test Track. I, I think Tiana's will be open by July 4th because I don't think they would have shut down Test Track before July 4th if Tiana's was not going to be up and running personally. I could be wrong, but that's my that's my. Thought. No, I would be surprised if it's I mean, I don't know about I don't know exact date, but I would agree with you. I think I think Tiana's is sooner than we think. By the fact here it is April 8th and they haven't said anything. I don't think it's Memorial Day because I, yeah. I think with I think with like cast member testing and, you know, annual pass and DVC testing and things like that, you're going to know at least two months in advance, I would say, of something opening nowadays. But I wouldn't be surprised if a couple episodes from now we're talking about the opening date. So. Right. Oh, I agree. I I, I yeah. think they have a, an opening date in mind. Yeah. You know, is it June seventeenth? Probably not. But I I think it'll be open by July fourth because I don't think they would have had the July fourth holiday, and have yeah. test track closed and Tiana's closed. So, but yeah, time no, will I, tell. I agree with you on July. I'll I'll hold my tongue on saying July fourth though. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, we just want it open for our trip. Um, yeah, right. <laughs> you know. Hopefully. So, hopefully. Yeah, because that's we've missed it. We missed it the last time. 
you know, we've missed it. It closed. And the last time we wrote it when it was Splash Mountain, it went down. So we wrote it in the light with no music and nothing moving, which Ryder thought was amazing. He was like the he hit he hit the lottery. It was like the be- yeah. for me, it was sad because that was like my nostalgia. But he thought he hit the lottery that that happened. You know, we but we miss it. We wrote it not long before it closed and it had the music going, but like at least half the animatronics were not working. (laughs) It it was really sad. (laughs) No, it was. I mean, it was lights on like it it was kind of creepy. It was no, it was kind of (laughs) creepy. Oh, for sure. Without the music. Yeah. 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 It was like. (laughs) Yeah, it was just weird. It was a memorable last ride, just not the one that I wanted. So our trip, you don't have a trip planned, right? You have Disneyland. California, yeah, Disneyland. We actually have no Disney World trip on the books at the moment and probably won't have one booked for probably our next one will be fall of 2025. It's going to be a rough one that long, I think. So I think the last time I was on, I mentioned that we were probably not going in November and we actually gambled enough to earn a free cruise. And I won't say we got we we got a free cruise because we gambled way more than the cruise is worth. So it's like the most expensive free cruise ever, but we got a we're going on a cruise the week that we would have gone to Disney World. So yeah. we're gonna go on a four night on a Royal Caribbean ship. And so that that really kind of sealed the deal that we're definitely not going. Now we might do a one or two night trip to do the one of the parties but Mm -hmm. definitely not doing a long trip and definitely not renewing our annual passes you know because our our annual passes expire in november so we won't be be renewing them uh at least for the foreseeable future but yeah after our july trip we don't have a trip on the books and i really don't know when we're gonna go which is which is really weird to say yeah i feel weird about it we went so many times last year we were like we just gotta take a break Mm -hmm. and I kind of knew that there'd be a point at which I'd be like, oh, it's been too long going almost two years without going, which is probably what we're going to do. But, you know, we're going to be we're going to be in Disneyland in a month and a half. So that'll get give us our fix. (laughs) For sure. For sure. Now, before we get going, I know we wanted to give a shout out to Jennifer. Yeah. Jennifer Wagner, who's she helps me with editing the podcasts and getting them up and published. So we haven't mentioned her in a while. She came on a couple episodes, but she prefers to be more behind the scenes. But she's a big part of this show, you know, just like the two of us and Sue and even Vicky. But, you know, Jennifer does a lot of behind the scenes work. So I just wanted to say thank you, Jennifer, for the work that you do. Yeah. And before we get going, I want to give a shout out to our three sponsors, DVC Resale Market, DVC Rental Store, and Monera Financial for their continued support of the My DVC Points platform. So with that, I will say, see you real soon, everyone. Bye, everybody. Ladies and gentlemen, please watch your head and step as you exit and take small children by the hand. Aw, cheer up, Dad. You know I'll come back. What DVC. My DVC Points is an unofficial Disney-inspired podcast created by fans of Disney Vacation Club. The thoughts expressed in this podcast are personal opinions and personal experiences. My DVC Points is not affiliated with Disney Vacation Club, the Walt Disney Companies, or any subsidiaries. We encourage listeners to contact their DVC guide or member services for official DVC policies.